gentlefolk around the noon period. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of hungry bellies in here, so I'm going to make this fast and fill the content. Welcome to China Recon 101. We're finding nation state infrastructure with almost free tools. Um, an early disclaimer here, when I mean China, I'm talking about the People's Republic of China, uh, or PRC as I'm going to say repeatedly. I'm talking about the political body, the combination of the nation state and the uh, party state. Um, and not any broader heritage or culture, uh, which is a very broad demographic. Again, this is the state I'm specifically talking about. So here's our quick agenda. Um, I'm gonna explain myself in one second. Um, then I'm gonna explain uh, China and its IT infrastructure as fast as humanly possible. Uh, and then we're gonna do a deeper dive into exploits at like a super high level. This is a 101 class. Um, and then we're gonna do a, uh, a dive into groups, again, at a one-on-one -on -one level. I'm gonna show some very practical and simple ways to perform recon on state-linked outfits. Uh, again, this is super fast, 30 slides. Um, I've linked this presentation out on my Mastodon, which will show up in uh, just one second. Bs at infosec. At infosec exchange. Uh, do reference it, this is exactly the same Google Slides I'm hoping to maintain as a living document uh, for some of this scope I cover on this. Uh, as for me, I'm an engineer at Security Org since 2016. I'm currently at Dragos. I work largely on content and analytics, and that includes internal tools, uh, Synapse, uh, and our threat intelligence landscape, stuff like that. I've also been a China scholar with various academia institutions since 2004. I've done postgraduate uh, international relations at UW, mostly within political economy and defense studies, but also Qing history. Um, I fell out of the FSOT circa 2009, which is where you have kind of this conflicts of uh, interests. Uh, so what even is this? Uh, this is China Recon 101. We're trying to take two rather broad subjects together, China state actors and early indicators of bad behavior. Um, so the, what we have for our early, if we, were, if we were to parameterize what our early warning signs are, it's all these different data domains. Uh, I've isolated five of them here, which is essentially you got the infrastructure, which is to say, what is doing all the reconnaissance? Where does it exist? Can I find it on Shodan? Uh, you have the secrets they use, which is, could be something as simple as like, was SSH public key? they use. Again, it, it, public key may be not so secret, but it's definitely something which allows us to do correlation work. Organizations, which organizations have an affinity towards attacking my infrastructure that helps you kind of understand their constraints and their interests. Capabilities, like what, what do they do for a living? What do the actors do for a living and what is the organizational focus? Um, and then identities, not identities in persona, but literally, what is the pri what is the p what is the PK they use in their databases? Um, and then I will get into some not often uh, um, identities used by both the Ministry of State Security and the Ministry of Public Security. Um, our objectives for doing this kind of recon uh, analysis um, is to kind of get some ideas of what vic victimology is like, essentially. Am I within, am I in the crosshairs here? Um, and then given an idea that perhaps there's some off chance I'm in the off, I'm in the crosshairs, prepare for the ops and know what sort of tooling they use. Um, in general, the reason why people use recon in general is for a form of opportunism. That's to say that you will find certain threat actors, especially bereft on resources, who will transition from a recon state to an attack state pretty quickly. But for the audience here, what we're talking about is mostly a form of defense in depth, meaning we get as much metadata as we know that tells us the probability that we're going to be victimized and we have a near intimate relationship with the parties that could do this. Are you subject of PRC recon? So nowadays, this is a very difficult question to answer because you will see the first four bullet points here you work for the DOD, you work in government, you work in R&D or ac academia, or you work in a critical industry. Those are pretty straightforward. You're either in it or you're not. The fifth bullet point, do you own a vulnerable router, is where things get kind of dicey because that could be virtually everybody in the US. <laughs> um, the, the kind of breakthrough for five worth noting, the reason why we've gone to the depths and why the scope has increased, 
I think you could see specifically within the Volt Typhoon report, which if you were to tear it down and look at the IOCs um, for uh, the malware, which was related to an attack on a defense industrial base in Guam, you will find that one of those IOCs on virus total has a call home to a router based in a for a Soho router, which is to say it is the router for a small physical security business based in Texas. Um, so the fact that Soho is involved in the mix, or when I say Soho, I mean small office, home, uh, uh, small office or uh, home. Um, when, with Soho in the mix, it means that there's a pretty broad space here. Um, so we're going to do a turbo mode area studies here. Um, it's basically what is, I'm going to go through what is China, what is IT in China in like maybe two or three minutes. So you ready? Go. So first off, this is like essentially how the internet evolved in China. 1999, you had, it was basically an academic study. Uh, the charts on the right are circa 1999. You can see, oh, hey, there's, uh, everything is oriented by the Ministry of Information and Industry, which is to say it's an industrial practice. But then you see some, most of the organi organizations me mentioned. You have the Ministry of Education and the Chinese Academy of Science. It's academic, similar to um, the beginnings in the US with ARPANET, except kind of push forward a little bit. Um, 1995, again, it, it, this sort of norm uh, spreads throughout all of academia. 2005 is when their dot-com boom hits a little bit five years in the future. Um, and then 2015, under Xi Jinping, there's been an aggressive uh, centralization, uh, pushing towards state control discipline on enterprises that act out. Um, you have firms like Alibaba being punished because you have a researcher um, uh, 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 documenting log for Shell um, before disclosing to the state. Um, telecom infra is a very complicated subject. Um, all the arrows kind of show bound relationships, but the main thing you gotta know is there's three big players. China Mobile, China Telecom, China Unicom. Um, all of them are standard enterprises, so they are subject to the control of an organization called SASAC, uh, which is basically the largest organization in the world uh, in terms of capitalization. It's hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, further, um, the internet has exploded in kind of a, a, a huge way. All told, beginning of 2023, there's over 1,000 ASNs that are PRC-based, um, or at least have one PRC-based host operating in it. Uh, that's around 200 million domains, around 800 million IPs, um, uh, IPs along IPv4, uh, and around like millions of IPv4 subnets alone. Um, so uh, a major thing that we're gonna actually deal with practically is that Chinese is hard for computers, there's multiple encodings, uh, Unicode, uh, <laughs> Unicode is kind of a new wave. It kind of makes the rest of the rest of encodings look easy. Uh, some habits from the old days persist. Uh, the two habits we'll, I'll focus on are opinion initialism. So you have um, a word, guoyu, which means Mandarin in one way or another, which might initialize to GY. You also have number rhymes, which um, take certain, uh, which use numbers in order to, uh, based on how they're pronounced, and makes rhymes off it. So 1688.com is Yali Obaba or Alibaba. So we will use pinyin initialism later, so remember that. Okay, we're going super fast in exploits. There's a lot more to talk about area studies, but this is not the focus of my talk. Um, we need to drill deeper, specifically state organizations that deal with network security, and specifically how they deal with network exploitation. And so we're gonna talk about uh, just a slew of players right here. Uh, the top, and they're all within different hierarchies within the government. Uh, you have the state council, which is more or less the head of government. Um, you have SASAC under that, which I mentioned previously. It runs the telcos. You have the NASSP, which is equivalent to the NSA. It comes up with cryptography standards. Uh, under the state council, you have the Ministry of Industry and IT, which I'll refer to as MIIT. Uh, they own NVD, which is essentially the state vulnerability program, uh, which is to say they hold all of the vulns. It's essentially a, na a nationwide uh, version of your favorite NIST establishment. Um, you have CNCERT, 
and CINETSEC under the Ministry of State Security, which both do vulnerability research and their own kind of focus. The Ministry of Public Security, which mostly are the FBI as kind of a rough analogy. They mostly take care of domestic situation. Ministry of State Security, which is more foreign oriented. Again, they have CINETSEC under them. We will be talking a lot about CINETSEC. And then there's a whole bunch of national champions, which, you know, Alibaba is a good example. They're all, uh, they all have close relationships with the State Council of Telco, as, as, uh, uh, to, to use the example of uh, Alibaba and the, uh, the vulnerability uh, disclosure as an example. So um, what they really have at this point is all these players are in the mix for a national strategic software kind of exploitation program, which is relatively new, like circa 2015. Um, as you can imagine, every single different actor in this has different interests, which align with the bullet points over here, which quickly is to rank, severity, rank the severity of vulnerability, stack the reporting structure, um, to involve foreign business, uh, which is to say capture the vulnerabilities, broaden punitive measures, capture core technology through licensing, and to, in general, have a national strategic focus. And that's kind of an orientation that um, uh, part of that uh, governmental discipline is uh, inculcated. Um, and largely this inculcation has occurred through the CAC, which is, again, it's new as she, it's run directly through the party rather than the state. The CAC is short for the Cybersecurity Administrative uh, Council, or excuse me, Cyberspace Administration in China. Its hierarchy extends in the Central Committee, and it's evolved from kind of this body tending towards uh, censorship policy into enforcing the recent raft of aggressive security legislation, such as the Personal Information Protection Law, or PEOPLE. Um, so pushing forward, uh, so this is where kind of the vulnerability plan gets articulated, or the vulnerability stockpiling at a national level gets uh, articulated. This is uh, a, a graph uh, from a, um, a publishment called, uh, it's called uh, Slate of Hand, as in the Council, of, uh, Council of, uh, the Atlantic Council produced recently. It's the work of Dakota Carey and uh, Kristen Del Rosso. Um, and you can see essentially the, there's a directed graph that pushes exploit uh, uh, vulnerability research from MIT, which this, this is NVDB right here in the middle of it, and um, through CSI, uh, CSTIS, which is essentially a ministry of uh, IT security management, it ends up flowing to MPS, which again is domestic security. And then in turn informs CNCERT, which um, has an information sharing based on the dot red line uh, to um, the MSS, which is to say that the main change as of late has been to take the trade associated vulnerabilities, which is to say stuff that might affect commercial interests and kind of make it a function of national security by default. Um, it, is, it is currently the law that disclosure has to go directly to the state preempting, uh, preempting uh, any, um, any broader uh, disclosure databases. And this is something that was influenced by the Alibaba engineers' uh, disclosure of uh, uh, um, a log for shell. So having acknowledged the raised stakes with exploitation, and that whole slide, which is to say it shows the wheels greased for publishing exploitation, um, I'm going to get a little bit more specific. Not super specific, like here's what activity group, uh, threat groups uh, tendencies are, but I'm going to do a relatively unique clustering of them. Uh, our focus is to how to determine shared behavior and figure out what level of risk applies to you. Um, so right now the players in rough order kind of dictate this dialectical between resources and sovereignty. And it kind of plays out in four different ranks of actors. You've got people who serve the state full time, you're, excuse me, you have organizations that uh, serve the state full-time. You have organizations that serve the state less than full-time, we'll call it part-time. Uh, some publications refer to it as double-hatting after, you know, you know, they're basically guest players. There are players who are not at all state actors, of which there are a few, and then there's uh, players who are deliberately enemies of the state. Um, so the rough kind of 
the rough criteria I have for how the organizational life cycle works for these players is under the resource banner, the goals are to stay profitable and grow capabilities. Profitability could be something like uh, the sort of ransomware activity or the type of credential harvesting uh, uh, feats that we see with lapses from the previous session. Uh, more often than not, it does involve capital outflows, which are very difficult to measure. Um, alongside it, there's, um, there's a tendency to obtain political capital based off of their activities, um, which in turn informs securing their autonomy, meaning they get to do what they want day to day. Um, and ultimately, the whole point is to avoid domestic scrutiny. Um, when you are a threat actor who has a part-time relationship with the state, uh, you have a nebulous relationship with the state and uh, crackdowns can be rife. So this is the rough clustering I've come up with at this point. Um, again, we got sovereignty as the y-axis um, and the resources as the x-axis. You may notice that I've included some non-CNO related players, non-computer network operations players on this. If you look at the far left, you have the largely incompetent, which is to say not many resources, but also no requirements for, very ad hoc requirements for sovereignty. You have PegTech, who has acted as a VPN source for threats on an ad hoc basis, and is otherwise known as kind of a sketchy spam source. And then you have Cloudsy, which Halcyon has written on recently, uh, which is, it, it operates pretty closely to PegTech, if not sketchier, and is like a one-person show. Um, all the way on the top, we have state-affiliated uh, content. Um, you have the Wu Maodong, the Five Cent Party, which uh, is uh, individuals who are taking payment uh, to make their thoughts known, potentially biased thoughts known on domestic social media. Um, there's been other CIB uh, players uh, that have been noticed through Facebook reports, but there's not much OSINT about these groups. Um, at least for now, it's getting more and more clear as of the, 20, the last quarter's release. Um, and then as kind of a contrast point, I have Hua Sha Jingwei, which is a cross-straits organization, which I will later show has interesting connections to the technological capacities of the Ministry of State Security. Um, so we'll get, we'll, get back, we'll get back to Hua Sha Jingwei. Um, as far as the actual known players, the actual people you see and know. At the very bottom, you have Black Tech and Shadow Tiger, who, as far as I can tell, do some domestic targeting in the PRC, which means that you know, they want money, but also um, uh, are perhaps uh, not at the beck and call of the state. Um, and then you have the line going down. You have many pass and Leviathan, which we know literally to be the PLA in some sort of another. Um, below them is Hafnium and APT41, which you have uh, bloggers and uh, threat research has shown that they are, at least some population are MSS funded, so we can say, okay, they're some degree of part time. You have Mustang Panda, who um, they have a lot of overlap with objectives, uh, which is to say their interests in, South, in Southeast Asia tends to correlate with more official actors, but there's basically no confirmation about, uh, about the affiliation of their personnel. And then there's a Drago-specific group called Loranite, who, um, let's just say they use a lot of commodity gear, um, MPS and uh, Gobi, Gobi I'll return to in a second. Uh, they seem rather script kitty, um, and they're after um, uh, BEC-related goals, which is to say financial goals. So, Maybe they're more opportunistic uh, in, a, in a sense. So finally, we're going to get to recon. We've, I've got maybe nine or 10 minutes left, so I'm going to try to blitz through this. This is the actual practical recon you can use in your day-to-day -day jobs um, to profile this threat or perhaps other threats. Um, I'm going to make sure I have five minutes for question, questions at the end. So OK, what recon is, we're looking at infra, secrets, organizations, capabilities, identities. The tools we're going to be using are Census, Shodan, Google, Baidu. On, I, I don't actually use Baidu here, but it's very useful if you need a, a different search indexer. Uh, Hunt.io and Gray Noise I also don't use here, but I can recommend their use. Census is very good for looking at certs and certificate transparency logs, as the previous talks referred to. Shodan's great for hosts. Uh, Hunt.io is 
uh, fantastic for looking for open directories. I highly suggest it. Gray noise is good for finding scanners, which I'm unfortunately not looking at scanners in this session, but I can tell you it's amazing for what it does. Uh, these are mostly free, meaning you can have a limited amount of result sets each month just by having either a no account or a free account. Um, okay, so quick info example. So um, I came across a weird ASN, AS37937, which is a data center associated, or I would say a, re, a part of the internet related to the China eGovNet Information Center. I had no idea what it was, so I wanted to profile really quickly just to see, is there something here which could be threatening? And some, just by looking at domains within census, you can see a wealth of information. The G day, just by going to the top result, which has 10, uh, 10 results, the GJDYZJB, it turns out to be related to SARFT, which is like an arts organization, and has movie ticket info. Um, the second result, SSL VPN, that is a string associated with old Sang4 firewalls, which is to say there's probably some tech debt in this, in this data center. Uh, NDRC regulator. Uh, Kubernetes ingress controller fake certificate. That is dev Kates to anybody who likes that sort of stuff. Um, it turns out to be uh, the dev side on blockchain stuff. And then a, a wealth of email domains for the Ministry of Ecology. So you can see old new gear, dev prod gear, lots of related orgs in the state council. Uh, secrets, this is a little bit more applied. So Google dorking is your friend. Um, in this case, I was interested in what sort of assets the Peng Chung laboratory might have, which is pcl.ac.cn. And I just dork them a lot just to see what do you have. Uh, I'm specifically from a professional standpoint, I'm interested in what they have in their cyber range because everybody has different cyber ranges. And uh, as somebody works in ICS, hey, you know, whatever they, you know, it's, it's interesting to see what it's, that sort of thing is. Uh, so that brought me to pclcr.pcl, which is essentially the, the range, uh, just by simply hunting around their domains. Uh, I popped into CloudBrain, which is also quite interesting, which is their, uh, their, uh, their ML data center. And what I found most interesting is if you look for docx's on a resource related to CloudBrain, um, it was possible to find a public key pair, which again, it's a public key pair, like you can't use it to own anything. But in some cases, it gives you some awareness of, oh, somebody associated with Peng Chung might want to be, t is, is trying to talk to my SSH uh, host as, as a really quick example. Um, okay, organizations. So um, it's kind of like a guilt by association within subnet. So, uh, I, one day I was poking at 103.42.78.0 slash 28. It's a subnet that exists within the uh, people.cn uh, uh, um, AS, which is to say people.cn is Ren and Rubau, the main uh, publication for the state. And just by going across, if you just look at the sites served within the ASN, you can find, um, you can find kind of an organizational link to the central committee and to uh, perhaps state security affiliated organizations. So within uh, people.cn, I saw huashaw.com, which like I mentioned, it's an MSS front for, uh, propaganda front for cross-strait relations. Uh, the NSSFC is essentially the academia f uh, head of the MSS. If you're like a, a highly educated and you're in the MSS and you want to retire, you go to the NSSFC. Um, and of course the communist youth is there. Um, for good sources, if you're interested in where members of the MSS go to retire, I highly suggest Alex Joske's work. Um, it is in the acknowledgements uh, page in this. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I am four minutes away, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip capabilities, but I highly suggest you check out this slide if you're interested in certific security sec certification information. Um, identities, I'm also going to, I'm gonna light on briefly. So do know that there's certain patterns for reverse DNS within uh, Chinese data centers. Um, here's a couple of them off the, off the tip. Most of them use initialism, for example, ip.adsl pool sx.net.cn. SX is short for Shanxi, and this is a pattern that associates with Unicom specifically. Um, there are many undocumented identities used in national security, which are super fun. Uh, the one I highly suggest, 
if you're interested in finding um, in finding really interesting things is the ISS tech code, which is used by um, the national uh, state secret uh, uh, body. So browse those as you wish. Quick takeaways, and then I'll take questions. Takeaways, practicing defense in depth is important. It allows you to want one to judge the possibilities, especially with something that could be as remote as state actors. Um, notably for the PRC, what I, what I see coming is that network IOCs will likely be North American based, meaning you got a, you got a VPS in North America, and then it's gonna hit you when it comes to actual attack. For recon, it could be different. Uh, with Volt Typhoon, we found clear links back to China Telecom. Um, with uh, certain DOE-related uh, DOE uh, IOCs. Uh, exploit stockpiling is accelerating and it's targeting ICS, um, something that is clear from uh, Dakota, Dakota and KDR's report is that there is an ICS kind of organizational bend to the, the, the Voln centralization project. Um, all, the groups like I ranked all have distinct state sovereignty and resources and it's worth kind of bucketing it based off of what you know and what your, your own organizational um, bearing is. Um, and I think finally, and most practical for people, there are key details that lurk in practical analysis techniques. You can get ASN, CERT, and shared infra correlation with census. It's very, very simple. It does require you doing research and visiting some pages, but you, you can do it. Trust yourself. Um, Google dorking is very powerful, as usual. Um, and specifically for this regional bearing, you want to look at Win uh, Wang On and Sinitsex uh, databases. It will tell you certified products, people, companies, um, and it will give you procurement information, which is just, it's, it gives you some interesting insight into what's happening, uh, as, even for organizations which try to keep themselves covert. Uh, so here's a bunch of additional reading. Take a look at the slide, look at, click some links. Intrusion Truth is kind of the coolest out of this, but sleight of hand I always, I, I always suggest. So, any questions at this point? I have exactly one minute. Oops, sorry. That sounds like no. Thanks. <laughs>